Tony, pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you guys. Um, I have to say, so for the first time in my life, I can say this at the start of an interview, the country, the first band I ever saw in my life. <laughs> Check the ticket earlier on, supporting the jam, 1st of December, 1982. Still in my top 10 gigs wow. of my life. What do you remember that time? Um, I, don't remember, I don't remember very much because it was a bit of a kind of wild and sort of wacky period. I mean, you know, we just started. Spent a few uh, months in the rehearsal room, started doing some gigs, got signed up, went on top of the pops, and then not long after that, did this gig, five stint run with the jam, and yeah. it was all just a whirlwind. And you know, the, the, the jam were um, a big band amongst us as well, you know, because uh, various others like the jam, worked with the jam, you know, it's, there's a lot of things going on. So. It was a lot to take in right in those sort of early heady days. You know, if it was to happen now, I'd be a lot more sort of pragmatic about it and sort of wistful. And, uh, but uh, it was just a, a wild time. It, you know, it was a dream come true for a young musician. You know, when all you dream of is becoming successful and making records and touring. You know, it was everything about that. And that particular run of gigs with the jam, I think, really kind of put us onto the map in terms of being a live band. Absolutely. And then yeah, the Crossing came out uh, a year later, 83. And what do you think that that album has endured so well? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, you, you make a record and you get the support from your management and then your record company. And all these people are there putting these kind of bricks of vibes in you. And you think, you know, this must be going somewhere because people are investing in it, you know, whether it's just through appreciation or finance and you know you think you're on a roll and you know when we'd actually started to record it it was just like you know it was bliss hey man we're recording our album we're recording with Steve Lillywhite we're yeah. recording in Richard Branson's studio in, in the Oxford countryside the whole thing was just like amazing and by the time we sort of up sticks from there and then moved on down to Rack Studios in London again you were entering this other temple of music which is Rack Studios, it's yeah, just yeah. an amazing studio, it's got such a heritage, it's got such a culture of music, uh, put together by the legendary, um, sadly no longer with us, Mickey Most, but you walked in and you felt like you were something, you know, that place had a vibe to it, there's so many hit records been made there, it's unreal, yeah, yeah. so we were in there making our records, so we kind of were made to feel like that, and then when the album came out, and then we started touring it, and when we started having the chart success, with the, the singles, it was just too much. Couldn't really absorb it, couldn't take it in. You know, we were kind of completely and utterly, our sponges were full, mm -hmm. couldn't take it in. And, you know, then by the time we started hit, hitting America, it was just like crazy. You know, the Americans went for the crossing big time. Yeah. Yeah, in a big country became a complete and utter anthem for all them out there. And, uh, you know, the rest of the album followed. And we spent two very solid years touring that album and uh, it was just a whirlwind and it was so much of a whirlwind it really it caught up with us. You know, we <laughs> yeah. really got to that point where okay, you know, the fuse is burnt, gunpowder's empty, there's nothing left. I think and, there's um, still Steel Town though, another classic album. Yeah. Um, had, did you record that during the touring? No, phase? it was literally Notes. about three or four weeks after we kind of had to um, pull out of our world tour because we got as far as um, Australia, uh, Australia. No, we were, we were supposed to go to Australia. We were in Japan, and uh, you know, all kind of unravelled. And so we thought we'd take a bit of time off. But during that time off, you know, rather than sort of just relaxing and enjoying the, the spoils of our fortunes, it was back to writing and back to getting another album together. And, you know, we were tired, we were, we were completely knackered. But, so, but you know, we just sort of trawled through ideas that we've been sort of developing throughout the touring period and then eventually decamped to Polar Studios in Sweden to put the thing together. Ah. Uh, and that album was a completely different atmosphere. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was, you know, all the fun and excitement and the exhilaration of the crossing and the two years of touring turned into this kind of big quagmire of tiredness and, and emotional sort of breakdown, you know, we'd all had it. It had been so full on. So to come up with another album, it wasn't going to be sparkly, it wasn't going to be shiny, it wasn't going to be poppy. It was going to be about 
harsh grey reality of life and it came out that way but I, feel, I still think it's a great piece although it's not you know may not be seen as a commercial entity but I think when you're in a band that we are and the way that we've developed and the, the way we've become over the past 30 years we were a band about making albums of the time of what we were at the time of who we were at the time what was around us at the time it wasn't about the next kind of commercial venture you know and, you know, taking the formulas and let's rewrite fields of fire and, and, and do all that kind of stuff it was about just okay where are we where are we now you know, you know how happy are we how sad are we how uptight are we how screwed up are we and you know the, the, the albums came out according to that those that ethos so. maybe it came across i mean <clears throat> yeah it certainly wasn't happy but it was very deep very emotional I mean, it was very, we're very mm-hmm. 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 you know it's just you were in. It we're was a deep band. powerful. We yeah, were a deep no. band, but it was deep because of because of what we wanted to do musically, not because we wanted to be up our own bums with music philosophy and stuff Absolutely like that. Yeah, it was right. just about writing about what your spirit and soul was telling you, and and all this time, don't forget, we were growing as a unit. You know, we were sort of four guys who come from four corners of the United Kingdom and found we had similar ideals and. It wasn't quick coming together, but and it was just a very good manifestation and gestation. So as the albums came on, you know, we were becoming more and more of a band. But what we wanted to be as a band was becoming very clear, which was we just wanted to, we wanted the, the music to be the star, and we wanted to be the people known for playing it. We didn't want to be the stars, you know. And uh, I think we conducted ourselves in that way pretty much all the way through. Definitely. The, um, I mean, obviously this tour is, is the crossing, you know, yeah. playing in full. Can we expect a steel town no. at some point? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Well, it's... Because it's not sparkling. Again, it's about, <laughs> no, it's about focus. I mean, this whole idea... I mean, it's twofold for us. Um, the idea of us celebrating 30, the 30th year of this particular album, you know, people see it as a classic rock album, Absolutely. which is a fantastic accolade to have, and uh, I'm very proud of that. Um, but it's also about 30 years of big country. It's about 30 years of us being a band. And we might have to excuse me for a second. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> right, um, and, it's, uh, and it's also about us giving our final farewell to our friend. And I think that's really important for us to do because we've been sort of touring for a year now. So we did the couple of tours last year and then we did the festivals. And, you know, everything has it's been about us coming back and saying, you know, this is who we were, but don't forget there was somebody else as well. And I think this is kind of the final final curtain for that kind of enough, part of our lives. Because I'm very intent on making this group either be a current group, a contemporary group, um, or nothing. I'm not into the idea of um, things being heritage, you know, don't want to come back next year and do the Steel Town 30, 30 no, anniversary. Right. To do that you know end, what I mean? Yeah, no, no, to that end then. So, yeah. Mike Peters, how, how did he become involved? I mean, I, I was a big Alarm fan as well, to be fair. Yeah, um, was, you know, we've known him for years. I mean, throughout most of our career, you know, the, the Alarm has supported Big Country many times, and, and Mike supported us on his own yeah. many times, and he's been part of our atmosphere. And um, during the time since Stuart passed away, uh, Bruce has had more contact with him. Um, playing in uh, the little groups that they sort of used to perform in um, Dead Men Walking yeah, yeah. in one of them. So Bruce has been very close to Mike and then when it came to when it came to us being asked to do things because I dragged my heels for such a long time oh, excuse me oh. hello <laughs> are you outside? okay uh, Barry, I'm doing an interview <laughs> So Barry's going to come and get you and bring you upstairs. Okay, are you outside now? Okay, I'll get Barry to come and get you. All right then, okay. Um, where was I? Uh, I read it's like this. Peter's and Mike Peter's sort of joining. Yeah, so when we, when it came to sort of doing something, I dragged my heels for many years because um, I didn't basically want to do this anymore. I, I kind of thought to myself, um, the band's had a great run, you know, Stuart's decided to leave us, so um, mm-hmm. I don't want to be in a band anymore. I don't, I, I've never been 
here because of anything else but being in a great band, making great music. The idea of re uh, reforming a band for commercial reasons or any kind of reasons um, was very kind of sickening to me. You know, we were a very special band in my eyes and the band wasn't going to yeah. be anything without Stuart. But um, in 2006, um, our fantastic um, fan base who, um, who frequent our, fans, uh, uh, our website you know, in their thousands um, decided to organise a, a gathering, a, f a fan convention in Holland. So um, I kind of felt so maybe I shouldn't be so mean about them. Went over there and we went over there. And Mike came and guested with us on a couple of songs. And, uh, that went all right, all right, but I didn't like, I, I, it still didn't feel right for me. And again in 2007 we were encouraged to do something to celebrate the 25th anniversary of, of the band. Um, again, going against the wisdom of my manager, <laughs> I said that look, if we're going to do this we'll do it as a three piece. Because it was just our way of saying, you know, good farewell to our, our yeah, no. colleague. Of which we did. Michael, and myself yeah. and Bruce shared the vocals, yeah. and uh, Bruce did all the guitar parts he could. And it was a, it was kind of bittersweet. It was fun, but it was kind of weird. Um, but again, there was no kind of real vision to, to go ahead and, and do more. But um, more recently, a couple of years back, actually, um, we were invited to take part in a concert for Kirsten and Carl, uh, Radio Two, yeah. putting together. And because Kirsten was a great friend of ours and she was also married to Steve Lillywhite, we thought, well, how can we refuse to do that? And I decided to drop everything that I was holding close to me and just do it. But the question is, who are we going to get to join us? Because, you know, I wanted to, you know, we'll just do it properly this time. Have two guitars, you know, blah, blah, blah. And um, for a couple of months, a few names were banded about. I won't mention who they were, but they never, they didn't sort of seem right or feel right. And then. Bruce said, well, let me get Mike. So we got Mike, and I said, what about other guitars? So I've been, Bruce said, I've been um, training up my son. He'll do it. And, okay. So you brought a different, Jamie bringing a different dynamic to the band then? Or? Yeah, youth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, I think really the reason why we went with that idea is just to give Bruce an opportunity to f settle it himself because, you know, taking on the guitar parts, which were so obviously seen to the outside world as, you know, everything about Big Country was Stuart Adams, particularly guitars. But I don't think people really gave Bruce enough credit for, for the, his guitar in, in the band. Yeah, um, yeah. But for him to do this, he needed to have the confidence that he could do, do it well. So him having his son by his side seemed to be a, a better political move than an artistic move, because you know, we could have got so many different types of Absolutely. people to take the second guitar. But Bruce had to be, Happy, so um, you know, so we gave Jamie the chance, and you know, he went through the first tour in January last year, and he did really well considering you know, his age. Mm -hmm. And the January and the April tour saw him develop, and by the f f the festivals, you know, he seemed very much sort of comfortable. With this tour, he's been awesome. Right, you know, so he just really feels and looks the part, and you know, is a real credit to, to, to the lad. And uh, you know, it. it it feels good, it feels right, so, um, you know, and I don't know if we can say much about Mike, because it's just Mike, just, just fits, full stop, so. Just to but what it, what it did, mm. in essence, was to make me feel that comfortable in doing this, because I, you know. And I'm getting point. that sense of you, absolutely, but, I mean, yeah. moving forward, obviously as a band, you have to, and, you know, say, you said, you know, some sort of closure on um, Stuart and... I'm sure he's, he's looking down very happy mm. about what he's doing anyway. But so how does the songwriting dynamic now work in? So you're back with Steve Littlewhite, <coughs> done the single, you're obviously working on an album. So where, how, how does the songwriting partnership work then within the band? Well, it's, the carrying, it's carrying on the same way as it did, but, but I mean, the only thing that was different with Stuart is that um, when we got music together, we'd get music together collectively and Stuart would go away and write lyrics, but now we're all taking part. Anybody's got any lyrical ideas, you know, we shove it in and see what comes up. Now. Um, Mike's really amenable to work like that. I mean, again, we've, we've still got to consider that Mike is not a full, full member of this group. You know, we're borrowing him from Alarm. So uh, he has his Alarm sort of head as well. But, uh, of course, yeah. Which, it makes it easier for him to fit in with us because he doesn't have to be in control there. 
and you know he, he can be part of something which I think that excites him as much as anything else. So uh, to be part of the songwriting team, I think he really enjoys that because he writes all the songs for the alarm. And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, he doesn't want us to be the alarm, and we don't want to be the alarm, and we don't want the alarm to be a big country. But it's, uh, the way that it's formulating itself now, it's it's that we still haven't got the definitive idea of what the next album is going to be, but it's brewing. Any sort of sense of a direction that you could give us? Um, musically, I want to say no, but I'm not. <laughs> musically, it's going to be as melodic as Big Country has ever been. It's going to be harder. Um, it's, 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 it's going to be rockier without being metal. And, um, you know, the high, harder and higher that we can push Mike's voice, the better. <laughs> but as long as it's a good tune underneath it. That's right. If, if you had to sum up Big Country in three songs across the whole of the rest of what you've done, <laughs> what, what through, I know it's not an easy question, what would you oh, say? God. You know, there could be some music news watchers that have, you know, mm. youngsters that haven't seen Big Country. That's worse than what's your favourite Big Country song, actually. <laughs> <laughs> <It's three. laughs> I mean, in a Big Country had to define this, I suppose, initially. It, that was a song that we grew with together in terms of its its birth and its gestation. Um, God damn. I think um, Look Away saw us take a, a direction further down the line which combined sort of rocky guitars, 6-8 beats and beautiful melody and still kept that kind of early notion of what the band was. Um, many would disagree with me, but Driving Damascus was pointing the way to what we could have done next if Stuart stayed with us. Because that album, I think, was really kind of beginning to bear new fruit from the band. You know, we'd gone through you know, a bit of a, a tough time you know, sort of during the late 90s, they weren't our time. You know, all the other bands that were coming through the Oasis and all that kind of stuff were doing their thing. And, you know, we were, we were a band kind of struggling along and taking stock a little bit, but when we went in to do Driving Damascus and that track in particular, I thought that we started repapering the way to how we were going to be pushing the boundaries even further still. So, there are your three footsteps. Fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. If I've got one last question, it'd just be anything to say to, to Music News Watchers, really. Um, music News Watchers, well, sorry if you had to look at me for a start. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of getting myself psyched up for this gig here at Shepherd's Bush uh, tonight. Um, but I will tell you, it's absolutely fabulous to be in this group and still be able to be in this group. I feel very lucky and very blessed. and. Uh, I hope that we can make it uh, into 2012 and 2013 as a contemporary band. Bye. Fantastic. Thanks a lot for your time, man. I can't wait Very for sure. tonight, to be honest. Excellent. Thanks. 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 Thanks.